Hey, this is Vu, and today I'm going to be talking about Connector on Mirage, or rather the A Rotator Jungle Connector Area Player on Mirage. And some people I have seen run two dedicated A, but I think it's a little bit of an outdated setup. And for the most part, you're probably going to be finding that most teams and most of your pugs are going to end up being one player dedicated A, one player mid, and one player connector jungle area as the rotator so in this position obviously there's two main things you're trying to do you're trying to put pressure on middle when possible and you're trying to support your a player when necessary so a lot of the time what you're trying to do as a connector player is just make sure that your a player doesn't have to worry about palace because if your a player can get pinched from palace especially if they can molly under balcony or if they can flash and jump out you're basically hanging your a player out to dry so you're trying to deal with that as much as possible and support your mid player. Now, typically, you're going to find that in most of your games nowadays, your opponents are probably going to be tossing a flash, or a smoke rather, out towards top middle to get top mid control. And a lot of the time, this is going to mean that your mid player might go towards connector, he might go towards cat, but in the end, he's not really going to be able to hard hold middle. That's kind of a thing of the past as well, which means you're going to end up having to deal with the potential for your opponents to be jumping into connector or boosting up into window at some point during the round. Now, the best way I've found to deal with this is to try and hold on to a smoke as long as possible before tossing it down in this corner here or in the opposite corner. Either way, this will prevent anybody from pushing through it for the most part, and on both sides you can one-way it and look into connector for that free kill. So what you're really doing here is you're delaying your opponents for the duration of the smoke, you're potentially getting some kills on players coming through underpass, as this will be a complete one-way smoke and you can grab that free kill. You're also putting yourself in a situation where you could potentially... Uh, if your smoke lands a little bit further out than that one did, you can potentially do some crazy play where you run out towards bottom and mid with a flash and go for a kill here. So you're giving yourself quite a few options by throwing that smoke. You can of course see over it towards top middle. You can jump up here if you want, however I feel like that puts you at a bit of a disadvantage and you can get a little bit done. Now the question really is what do you do once that smoke goes down and it really depends on how long you've spent with that smoke up. If you manage to hold on to your smoke for quite a while and the smoke starts to go down you can coordinate with your cat player a lot of the time to get a flash peek in the middle. So one of the ways you can do it is you can have your middle player or your window player just toss a, uh, a flash that bounces up like that and you triple peek so your middle player can peek out from window you can peek out from up here and the cat player can peek out from up here as well and you go for some sort of a triple peek towards middle to try and clear it out and get information because if there is something like 50 seconds left and there's nobody in middle there's probably a good chance that they're not coming back to middle and you don't have to worry quite as much about it now of course this isn't something you can always do a lot of the time your middle player is going to have rotated off of window towards ticket booth and I see this as probably the main thing that oppers do nowadays they'll rotate off of window towards ticket booth and play from ticket booth late round which means they're going to be holding towards ramp and towards palace and you're going to be pretty much responsible for the jungle window connector area so it's a little bit more awkward to hold this because you do have to worry about getting shot from palace so you have to cover window and you have to make sure nobody can come up connector however it does put your team in a very solid position to hold a site makes it very hard for your opponents to read if you're only doing this occasionally and you're in a decent position to be able to quickly rotate over to b if necessary as well so i would say this is probably one of the more common things you'll see happen at at least in coordinated games where an opera very often will go back to ticket booth and in this situation you can be playing one of a few angles one of the most common angles you'll probably see people playing is on left or right side of a connector here so on this side of course you're a little bit vulnerable however it's a good angle to catch opponents off guard a lot of the time and you're in a pretty solid position if your opponents go for a straight a execute well this isn't necessarily the best spot just if they're coming up connector the good thing about this spot is you can prevent people from hiding in this corner effectively or getting to it at least if you hold the angle a little bit off or you can catch them a lot of the time just by peeking out and if they are executing into a you can do the typical quick flash 
and peek out and go for some frags rather than the tough situation whereas if your opponents start to execute into a and you're stuck on the other side of connector you have to worry about full clearing all of connector and the potential for an opera to be posted up from somewhere like here or someone to just be posted up from the bottom of connector waiting for you to peek and grab that free kill so while this is a bit of a vulnerable position Again, there are benefits to it, and it's the type of area you want to be switching it up to keep your opponents guessing. Any specific spot you play above connector in this jungle area can be exploitable if your opponents know you're going to be there. So a lot of the time you're just trying to switch it up as much as possible and catch your opponents off guard for those free kills whenever you possibly can. Now, other than that... Your main goal as this connector player, if your opponents are executing A without putting mid pressure, and thereby you're not worried about this connector area, is to just support your teammate as much as possible. There, of course, there's a question, do you want to push through the smoke that they end up throwing jungle or not? And this really depends on how you feel and the situation in the round. So let's imagine for a second that there are two smokes down and your opponent or your teammates trying to hold onto the site. One of the things you can do is toss some flash that land on the other side of default as oftentimes your teammates gonna be playing behind default potentially tossing some flashes for himself you can toss flashes that land right here to support a player that's playing default and put your opponents in very weird positions because as they strafe out the flash is gonna be landing right in front of them in a lot of the positions they want to be playing and your flashes can definitely support your teammate and they're very easy to line up to just toss off the ground to hit default uh, even through a smoke it's very easy however again the question being do you want to push through the smoke or not it really depends on a few things first of all you can question how your opponents have been in the after plants if your opponents have a very weak after plant or you're playing with a coordinated team and you have a very solid retake then you probably want to avoid pushing through the smoke too much however another it's another thing that really is about keeping your opponents guessing if you never push through the smoke and your opera window never pushes through the smoke on a bench that means your opponents can too easily be able to focus entirely on your a site player and isolate him easily however if you're pushing through the smoke every round then you're actually kind of putting yourself in a bad situation as well because they're simply going to be posted up on you waiting so you want to be occasionally pushing through occasionally not Again, depending on if your teammate's alive, then pushing through is a stronger option as your opponents are now focusing on two different angles and they can't isolate you. For example, if you toss this flash that banks off the wall and then you jump through into sandwich, if you have an opponent or a teammate rather alive under balcony or default, it means that your opponents can't strafe wide around trying to catch you. So of course, if you're a if your teammate is alive and your opponents have been strong on after plants, you want to trend a little bit more towards pushing through that smoke, going for those picks early, and trying to get something done. And if your opponents have been weak on after plants, or if your teammate's already dead, then you definitely want to be considering whether or not you want to do that, and probably trend towards waiting for the retake and doing that effectively as well. Now the only other thing you should be recognizing here is that you should also be mixing it up a little bit with aggressions towards A. Now it's not really your choice if you want to get aggressive, it's your teammate's choice for the most part, as he's the dedicated A player he might call you over to get aggressive and occasionally you want to be looking at that in certain scenarios especially if your opponents as most pug players are are kind of linear in the way they play if they're not really doing a lot of splits if they're not putting pressure on the other side of the map when they're going to execute you can get very aggressive towards a ramp in the mid to late round to get some information a good way to do that is to just walk up and have a teammate toss a flash over you can right click a flash or something like that and just get some information out here and see what's going on a ramp is one of those areas where if nobody's outside a ramp with something like 30 seconds left it's pretty unlikely that your opponents are coming towards a well it's possible that your opponents are going towards b if there's nobody in apartments with that much time left there's pretty low possibilities that your opponents are just getting back to a ramp with 20 seconds left if nobody's left there it get, it puts them in a very weird position and it's kind of unlikely so this push can get a lot of um a lot done especially if you're end up being the a anchor late round because your a player has died it's just something to consider and the other thing to notice is that when you crouch out in front of a ramp here you should recognize that you can actually see people's feet and they can't see you so anyways 
A connector is one of the best spots in my opinion to play on this map if you're trying to carry because you can both affect mid and A and you're a fairly fast rotate to B so connector is one of my favorite spots on this map. I'd recommend playing it and uh, hopefully this helps.